Hello. Hey. Here we are at Ride Brooklyn. Tell us your names. You are? Pete Kocher. Pete Kocher. I was always wondering how to pronounce your last yeah. name. Jessica Kocher. Jessica Kocher. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I did a lot of, you know, racing. I actually started out as a competitive snowboarding, snowboarder and biking just kind of got me through the summer, kept me in shape and then got into mountain biking, mountain bike racing and then felt like, you know, I got into road biking as a way to train for mountain biking and then found that when I started getting fast on a road bike, I was really fast on a mountain bike. Um, and then when I started doing more climbs and more like technical courses on the mountain bike, it made me feel faster on the road bike. So I was doing a lot of mountain and road racing at that time, feeling pretty, uh, you know, fast and really enjoying riding and racing. And kind of became addicted to racing bikes. And, you know, from there, uh, you know, I'd always worked retail uh, for, you know, when I wasn't racing or competing with snowboarding, I'd be working in the shops and, you know, then, uh, you know, moved out to Brooklyn a few years back and, um, you know, I actually managed a shop out in Greenwich, Connecticut, drove back and forth every day, you know, thought I could do something good here in town and, you know, a little, have a little something for everybody, you know, do, you know, something differently than everybody else was doing around here, but uh, so far it's gone. Oh, for the future of you guys? Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going. Can we just talk a little bit about what you're doing here? Uh, yeah, right now we are just trying to correct a uh, setback on uh, Helene's saddle here. She was behind the pedal spindle, um, so she was losing power essentially. We're trying to make her a little more comfortable here by moving it forward. Looks good. How do you like the Super 6? I love it. I really do. I love the frame. You know, if you do research and you shop around at like, you know, through the internet and just get an idea of what a lot of New York City shops are like, there's a, a real bike snob culture and we're trying to just cut that down and like... For the record, know. we're not talking about bike snob NYC, correct? Correct. No, <laughs> it's just like, you know, he's there for a reason it's because he knows like that, you know, bike snobbery is out there and it's like, you know, a certain times you can appreciate that but when you're coming in like especially with new bikers or you know maybe somebody who's an avid cyclist wants to get into racing or get a little more serious and it's like you know you want to come into somewhere where you feel welcome and feel like you can ask what you may perceive as like a really dumb question that you should really know the answer to and not get attitude and not like you know have to deal with people talking down to you it's like you know that's really where this came from it's like you know, this is fun, we enjoy it, this is what we all do, and you shouldn't have to, like, you know, feel like you can't ask a question about something, you know, just because you don't want to feel like an idiot to the people that uh, think they know everything about bikes. So, um, I would say that's a huge motivation to doing things the way that we do it and doing it in our own way, because I just don't see any benefit to that way. And one thing that's cool about copy training is that you know, you're never going to work as hard at home on your trainer as you will, you know, when you're on the comp your trainer and you can see all your numbers, all your stats right there in front of you as well as, you know, if you're training with up to eight guys, um, you're going to see what those guys are doing too. You're going to get a little more competitive, you know, you're going to beat up on each other and what you'll find because there's really no actual coasting with comp your trainers, you know, even if you're on a course with rolling hills, you never really stop pedaling. So, you're still doing like a basic endurance right. pace, right? Yeah, yeah, so it tends to beat you up more even than, you know, being on the road. So you really get a better quality workout in terms yeah, of the work. Absolutely. Yeah, So you can spend, you know, basically an hour in the comp your trainers. It's like an hour and a half to two hours on the road. So. Um, All right, let's say I'm brand spanking new. I got a road bike. Maybe I did some races. I'm getting into cycling, road biking, for example. I mean, take me from the very basics, like, what do I, do? I've never done comp training before. I want to do some sessions. How do I, how do I sign up? Like, how do I get started and do this? Well, there's basically two ways we have. A lot of the local clubs and teams will book the studio for a month. That gives them one class a week at a specific time. They've got, 
you know, eight members from that club that are going to work out. Uh, the other way to do it is to just call ahead and you can book an hour to two hours at a time. We have some people that will book, you know, half an Ironman course, you know, three, four hours. Um, and anytime we're open, you can call and book a little time. You know, right now I think it's 25 for an hour, 35 for two hours. Um, and we've got a variety of different courses from interval type courses to, you know, replicas of hilly courses that are actual race courses. So Now are these taught like a class? There's somebody here overseeing uh, things? How does it work? Right now it's generally just a specific, you know, we figure out what kind of workout you want to do and we'll pick out an appropriate course. Um, and then, you know, just riding the course gives you the workout that you want. Gotcha. So you can come in and ride at Lone Wolf, right. like solo, if you're not attached yeah, to the exactly. team, for example. Okay. Yeah, and then what you can do too is, you know, if you do, uh, you know, every week or every other week, whatever, you can kind of see those numbers. You're going to see your wattage, you're going to see your average speed, you're going to see all that stuff. Um, and you're going to see that you're actually progressing through the season. And then when you, you know, get back to the road in the springtime, you know, you start out much stronger, much more fit than you otherwise would. Yeah, we talked a little bit earlier with Pete about his background and like snowboarding, mountain biking, road biking, <laughs> r racing. Uh, do you have any background in this? I mean, this is like yeah. what he's always known, so to speak. I mean, your angle, have you done any of these sports? Do you have a... An interest or are we always now like they're supporting? No, or? I was always a dancer, so dancers oh. don't do that sort of stuff because you can't afford to hurt yourself doing anything else. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, like literally, I wasn't allowed to ski or snowboard when I was young. Um, so, but as soon as he built me my first bike, I just started riding it everywhere and commuting. It's like, it's, yeah, she's a natural on a bike. <laughs> nice. What can people expect when they come into Ride Brooklyn? Either this shop or the future shop across the street. I'd say that they can expect to be greeted with warmth and be given the attention that they that they deserve. That's a big thing. How would you answer that? What can people expect when they come in here? I mean they can expect to you know just talk to us and have a conversation and not feel pressure to buy. You know, they can ask us any questions, they can, you know, even if the specific person they're talking to may not be the most knowledgeable person, he's going to direct you to somebody who can really answer, like, any question you might have. You know, there's a lot of experience here from a lot of different areas, and, you know, we're able to really take care of and identify with our customers. Cool. Is it challenging owning, working a business together as a couple? That part's never been nope. that <laughs> surprising. Like, uh, and we've been able to lean on each other. It's been that surprising to me because I never thought I'd be able to just like, you know, work with the person that I lived with. Like I just like work when I was growing up, and you know, relationship-wise was always like my oasis from the relationship. Was now it's like we really get a lot of strength from each other, which is huge. So. The only thing that's hard is like putting it aside when we're at night, you know. When we're when we finally, yeah, like, if we finally have time alone away from the shop is for me especially to not talk about the store is really hard so that's the only thing but yeah. we can be working together all day on the weekend on a, on a busy day and at the end of the day I'm like so how was your day like we don't see each other <laughs> right yeah, yeah running around you got two floors and yeah. big back section <laughs> yeah. plus it sounds like More and more people getting into cycling and a lot of people who are, you know, just want a place to go where they feel like they belong and they're not going to get hassled, they're not going to get any attitude and can come in and talk about whatever they want. Or upsold big time, right. or yeah, accessorized to help. Yeah, you know, we're going to give people what they need and we're going to talk to them with respect because, you know, we appreciate that they're there. Um, you know, and that's how I feel like people should be dealt with when they're coming in to you know, get information and, you know, spend money in your shop, you know, I feel like it should be treated with respect. Absolutely. Um, you know, that's real big for us. And, you know, we just enjoy what we do here because we love cycling and our customers are here for the same reason, so.